When choosing an external display to use with your Mac, you could go for one of Apple's own offerings, which start at well over $1,000 for a 27-inch 5K display. But why would anyone do that when dozens of other manufacturers sell 27-inch 4K panels for a fraction of the price? Apple has always been consistent with the expected size of on-screen interface elements, such that the default size of icons in Finder is about 15mm wide. To achieve this, before the advent of Retina or high DPI displays, Macs would have a pixel density of somewhere between 110 and 135 pixels per inch, or PPI, such that no matter what Mac you used, the interface elements would appear approximately the same size regardless of the actual dimensions of the display. When Retina came along, it was implemented in a very similar manner to the difference between 1080p Full HD and 2160p 4K, in that the same image would be displayed, but the pixel density is doubled in both horizontal and vertical dimensions. Apple Retina displays have a pixel density of somewhere in the region of 218 to 254 pixels per inch, effectively doubling the non-Retina resolution. If you render the interface using the same number of pixels per interface element as is used on non-Retina displays, you end up with an absolutely vast amount of interface space, but the interface elements are tiny, so instead the interface elements are doubled in size. Therefore, a Finder icon from a non-Retina Mac with a size of 64 by 64 pixels would be represented by 128 by 128 pixels on a Retina Mac, but would occupy the same amount of physical space on the display. The result is the same amount of available screen space as a non-retina display, but with crisper text and smoother graphics. This requirement for consistent pixel density is the reason why Apple doesn't put 4K displays into MacBooks. The pixel density would be too large and interface elements would appear too small on screen. In fact, in order to get the correct pixel density for 4K, you need a 20-inch display which leads us to the reason why a 27-inch 4K display is not ideal for a Mac. At 27 inches, the pixel density for a 3840 by 2160 4K display is just 163 ppi, which is far less than the Retina standard, and as a result, the interface elements will appear far bigger than those on a MacBook or iMac display. This is particularly noticeable when moving windows between displays in a setup with both a MacBook and a 4K display, as the window will suddenly appear to grow hugely as it moves over onto the 4K display. Now it is possible to use what macOS calls a scaled resolution on a 4K display in order to have the interface elements appear at the correct size, but there are two disadvantages to doing this. Firstly, the interface elements won't be as sharp as on a genuine Retina display because the system is having to use fewer pixels to represent those elements than it would on a genuine Retina display and secondly, because the system is having to render versions of the interface elements scaled by an arbitrary factor rather than doing the very simple pixel doubling of Retina, system performance can be affected. To achieve the Retina pixel density of 218 ppi on a 27-inch display, you need a pixel resolution of 5120 by 2880 or 5K, which is what was used on the iMac Retina 5K, the Apple Studio display, and the LG Ultrafine 5K, along with a small selection of more recent 5K displays from ViewSonic, Samsung, Asus, BenQ, and Alogic. The 32-inch Apple Pro Display XDR also has the correct Retina pixel density of 218 ppi by employing a massive 6016 by 3384 6K panel. Of course, the Pro Display XDR has an equally colossal sticker price, so for most people who want large external displays for their Mac, 27-inch 5K displays are the sweet spot. And thankfully, the new crop of 5K displays now appearing on the market are significantly more affordable than Apple's three-year-old studio display.